The Soviet spy they caught. We want you to defend him. Here's the indictment. Well, I'm not sure I want to pick that up. From the very first conversations, we were talking about film references and also starting to talk about locations and diving headfirst into the difficult question, which is Berlin today just doesn't look like Berlin in 1960 anymore. And so in that very first meeting, we were talking about where are we going to go? How are we going to do this? This is Tim Gray for Artisans. For his Cold War thriller, Bridge of Spies, Steven Spielberg called production designer Adam Stockhausen. After he stopped shaking, Stockhausen, who won the Oscar last year for Grand Budapest Hotel, dove into the task of recreating the grim look of divided Berlin. Now, the film takes place between 1957 and 1962. So there's a lot of photos and a lot of newsreel footage of that period. Yes. But was a lot of that stuff that you wanted classified, or was it uh, open by No, a tremendous amount is available, actually. The British Pathé, in particular, has an incredible collection of the period of the construction of the wall in Berlin. The trick to it, then, is since the places are gone, or the places are so changed, how do you find uh, substitutes for those things and be able to reimagine it or bring it back to life today when the original places aren't, uh, unfortunately, uh, shootable. <laughs> the movie is really 50% New York and then 50% the Berlin part of the story. Now, within Berlin, again, since it couldn't all happen in Berlin because of the, the nature of how the city has changed, we went for a little further afield and actually went off into uh, a town uh, called uh, Bratislav in western Poland. You have the distinction of, of building the Berlin Wall. Yeah. You know, not many people can <laughs> say that. I mean, how, I mean, it's an amazing scene, but how complicated was that? Well, first finding the place was, was a bit of a trick, and so the town that we went to um, didn't really just fall in our laps. We kind of searched around for it. And then the locations team did a wonderful job. To do it, then on my end, it was about pulling from the research of the moments that we really wanted to see. And so much of what you see happening in the background action there are things that we pulled from photographs. And then, of course, all the nuts and bolts of how are we going to afford to build this huge thing. And how we ended up doing it was building it in modular pieces and building it out of lightweight materials. And then we broke it apart and we would take it everywhere else we needed it. So when you see the wall at Checkpoint Charlie, it's the same wall. <laughs> we just recycled. Now take it out! Stop making. It's all working. Okay. When you have something like the studio of Abel, a uh, character played by Mark Rylance, yeah. I mean, you had access to the real thing, but how much do you feel a need to to replicate that as much as possible, and how much leeway do you give yourself? You know, th that's an interesting question. It, it gets to the bigger question of how tightly tied do you stay to the research. And, and I find the research tremendously inspiring, and details come out of it that are always, in every project, things that I wouldn't have come up with on my own, and so I really depend on the research, but, but it's not a slavish thing. For instance, Abel's studio, there's a beautiful photograph that we have of his paintings leaned up against the wall from when the FBI broke in. So that's a great thing, but we can springboard off of that and make the whole space. The whole trick is how to see the details and expand to something, to the greater whole from them. You can't accuse Abel of being a traitor. He's not an American. Oh, listen to yourself. You're defending him already. Well, now, I'm not giving anything away, but there's a crucial scene toward the end that takes place on a, a Berlin bridge. Yes. So did you have to build that bridge? No, no, no. So everything I said about the original places are no longer around, except for that bridge. We were, we were able to shoot on the actual uh, Atlantic Bridge where this event really took place. You know, the, the barbed wire's gone, and the, uh, the tank trap, the hedgehog pieces are gone, and the sniper towers are gone, and we had to, we rebuilt all of that stuff. But fundamentally, it, it really hasn't changed. It's really amazing when you get to go, and you get to uh, shoot in historic locations that are the actual places. It imbues the whole process with something incredibly special. When you saw it, was, was there one thing in particular where you thought, I'm so proud of the details here. The thing that strikes me when I see uh, the, the film is, is actually something else, and it's the performances, because when we're actually making the film, I'm looking at all the details. I'm looking in the monitor, but I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking for blobs of paint, and I'm looking for nails, and I'm looking for little uh, things that have snuck in, you know, so I'm not really focusing on the performance, and so it's amazing to just sit in a theater and, and let the performances wash over you. And that's the, that's the, the, the kind of uh, the big thing that I get when I, when I, when I watch it in a the theater, and it's, it's, a, oh, it's a wonderful experience.